Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Grasp Confidence Podcast. I'm your host, Tara LaFon Gooch, and you are in for a treat today. For so many of us, our past holds us back. It can feel like quicksand almost. It's a struggle to get out. We don't quite know what the next steps are, how to overcome. Perhaps we've faced a level of adversity in our lives. Perhaps we've been a victim. Perhaps we face trauma. Perhaps we have faced so many of these human conditions that so many of us face. Let's let's talk about it, right? But my guest today has an incredible story and of how she helps people do these things that I just mentioned. And her name is Jamie Lerner. Jamie, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself. Hello, Hello. thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm a well-being therapist, and I am um, assisting people in assisting themselves, so stepping into their personal power, to get from where they are to where they would like to be. And that is very different from what I used to do, which was psychotherapy. Uh, asking people to continue and look back. And I found is um, that when we look back, we use all of those things we're looking at as an excuse not to move forward. So this is a very different approach and it's um, fun and quick and um, it seems to work pretty well. I love that. Yes, the we can look in the rear view mirror all day, can't we? But we won't get very far if we're driving. <laughs> no. It's interesting, right? So again, that past holds a, a lot of us back like quicksand. In order to be, I, I do believe that, you know, present mindedness, when we are present minded, there's a lot of purpose, there's a lot of power, there's a lot of potential. Unfortunately, if we're looking back in our past all the time, it's really hard to overcome that and be purposeful and powerful and have a lot of potential because we always feel like something's holding us back and constraining us, right? Yes. <laughs> but I think the important thing is that um, when we can give people permission to do something other than look back, or if we need to look back, if we could look back from our right here now adult perspective, then we would have a very different perception of what happened then based on who we are in our now. And I think that can be very helpful for people. Yes. And, you know, I mean, a lot of us have gone through things in our past we wish weren't there. I mean, let's face it, right? Um, but ultimately, those lessons in the past help shape us into who we are today. And there's no shame in that. I think a lot of people have this weight of shame that they carry around with them. It's an invisible weight, but it feels right there on, on your chest sometimes. It weighs you down. And it's really hard to overcome for a lot of folks. I'm curious, you know, what made you sh do this shift in your professional development to, you know, go from the psychotherapy where kind of always looking back to this new and enhanced practice that you have? Well, it just wasn't working for me. And it was clearly not working for clients because we kept talking about the same things over and over again. And all the things that we were talking about created very bad feelings within the client. So I found that there wasn't a release and there wasn't a relief happening at all. It was just what you had said, being stuck in the mud and spinning our wheels and not going anywhere. So I decided that I'm not gonna be able to change the practice of psychotherapy but I can remove myself and create something different so that I feel that I could give people an opportunity to uh, step into their own personal power. And a lot of that power does come from things that have happened to us in the past. If we're willing to look at them from our right here now perspective and then use those opportunities and those people as excuses 
to move forward and to feel really good. Yes, I love that. In order to move forward, we have to be able to forgive our past. We have to move on. And it's not easy. We're not saying it's going to be the easiest ride, right? I don't think you've said that yet. Um, it is a long-term game, but so well worth it, don't you think? Yes, and I think it is a game, and you can play it in such a way with levity. It doesn't have to be this difficult process that you're dreading, and um, it, it doesn't. It could be a feel-good process because a lot of what we do is reframe situations. So it's the same situation, but can we look at it differently in a way that helps us, first of all, feel better, but also helps us move forward to something that we're actually wanting to create for ourselves, about ourselves. It's creating. I like that word create because that implies intentionality. Yes. And I think when we're intentional, we can create the version of ourselves we want to become. And that is very powerful. But in order to do that, we must believe in ourselves enough to know that whatever it was that had happened to us then does not have power over us right now. We are different. We're in a different place. It's a different time. We're not small anymore. We're not victims. So to step into that feels really good. And maybe not to forgive so quick, but just to let it go for a little while come back to it, revisit it, looking at it in a different way, and then begin to forgive ourselves. Because once we forgive ourselves, I think it's much easier to forgive everybody else. I love that. And <clears throat> one of my friends told me one time, she said, worrying is like paying for a debt or paying, or, pardon me, praying for something that you don't want. So worrying is like praying for something that you don't want, right? But the same can be said about an unforgiving attitude that we have about our past. And again, it could be a person, place, event, thing that happened to us. And again, we're not saying that forgiveness has to be done day one. It is a process. It takes time. But when you forgive, you're able to release and let go. And it doesn't have that stronghold on you that ultimately keeps you like that mental prisoner. Right? I think that that is true. I, I do. But once again, I think it starts with forgiving ourselves for whatever it is that occurred. Um, that is no longer where we are right now. And actually, all of those things created who we are right now. So to develop an appreciation about where we are and how far we've come from that. I love that. Um, in my TEDx talk, I mentioned three steps to building uh, sustainable confidence. One is gratitude for the person that you were. So forgiving your past self, for forgiving those mistakes and acceptance. And also embracing that journey of how far you've come, right? But then it's that gratitude for your present. Again, how far we've come. What have we learned along the way to get us here? And appreciation for that person. And then a future self, having gratitude for the best version of ourself. That version of ourself that's already within us. It just is kind of waiting to be released. That's how I view that future version of ourselves. And because it's already within us, that gives me a lot of confidence to keep going. No matter what happens in life, I, it's almost an anchor for me. Now, with your clients, I'm sure a lot of them have had troubling things happen to them. Adversity. Um, maybe they've overcome a lot, right? Have you found that when we've overcome adversity that we don't have to be victims, that it can actually build our resilience in the process? Yes. Uh, part of the problem is that our society, they love to hear about all the trauma and drama. So we are actually <laughs> trained from a very early age 
to focus on that and report that in order to get attention. Mm. Um, so once we understand that maybe once we begin to feel better and understand that we can create something different for ourselves, that we will have less attention on us. We'll probably have less friends. We'll probably have <laughs> people are not really interested in hearing how well you're doing or how well you're feeling. So once we focus on ourselves and how we're feeling and take the focus off of others and what they're asking of us and expecting of us, I think it's much, much easier to create that future vision for ourselves about ourselves. Wow, that is so true. And it's something nobody wants to hear, right? Because <laughs> a lot of the people we hang around with, especially, you know, when we're at that lower point, aren't going to be a fit for us as we're elevating as individuals, right? As we're kind of leveling up, if you will. Because just like you said, it's not really comfortable for them, is it? No, misery loves company. Mm. However, a lot of people grew up hearing things from maybe parents, maybe teachers. Who do you think you are? As if to say, if you're not going to join that misery and you're going to step away and do something different that feels better, then who do you think you are? And that's very intimidating and a message that I think a lot of people have a hard time uh, reframing or letting go. So it's almost like, oh, you think you're better than us? Well, it's not about better, but I think in order to feel better, we really need to take the focus off of what is going on outside of us and redirect it inward to that relationship that we're having with ourselves. Yes. It happens. It really does. It happened to me. Um, I'm so glad I'm not alone. <laughs> Cause I know exactly you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, we've all, we all start somewhere, Jamie, you know, and if you want to level up and people will come out of the woodworks to put you down, they'll come out of the woodworks to say, who do you think you are? You came from, you were this poor kid or, you were the shy kid or you were this whatever kid, right? Or uh, so you think you're better than us. It hurts sometimes, but we have to really stay grounded during those times because that's when a lot of us can start to revert back and pull back, right? Yes. And so I tell people, this is your own private journey and you don't need to share it. Um, you know, you just need to get comfortable with it so that you're comfortable in your skin, feeling good about yourself. And that doesn't mean that you're separating yourself or feeling better than others. It just means that you're feeling better, period. And that's a good place to be. Yes, it's a good place to be, to be leveling up and to feel better. And it's nothing that we should apologize for. No. Trust me, I've heard it. I've seen it. Who does she think she is, right? This is something I've done, yet she's doing this, that, and the other. We all experience this. And it doesn't matter what level you are, <laughs> you know, you're going to experience this. For me, in my opinion, you know, we really have to guard our environments. It's not just about the internal environment we have in our minds of course that's true you know we have to uh, figure out how to reframe negative thoughts and turn things from limitation to growth but it's also our physical environments that we keep the company that we keep the people we surround ourselves with and a lot of the times it's these people that we've known for years they knew us way back in the day when we were a completely different person right but you know what else it could also be our family members. That's a double out train. What do we do? What do you do if you're trying to level up in life, but your family is saying, who do you think you are? That's not easy, Jamie. No, it's definitely a trigger. Yes. But, but I think also once we start to hear our inner voice, once we start to get more comfortable being inwardly directed, then that becomes 
the focus. And we tend to distance ourselves emotionally and sometimes physically in such a way that allows us the time and space to do the inner work without apologizing for it. Because instead of worrying so much about pleasing the other, we are getting more comfortable in terms of what feels best for us individually. It's not easy. I think this is where a lot of people, again, kind of get pulled back. They start to have success. They start to become this future vision of themselves. They, they start this journey of personal development. And then they get pulled back into the quicksand, right? And they start to kind of re reverse a little bit. They can. Yeah. Or <laughs> they can get so comfortable in the feeling good that all of their defenses kind of melt away. And they're very approachable. And all of a sudden, you're not defensive anymore because you're not apologizing for anything. You're just starting to feel really good and proud of who you are. And when those triggers occur instead of bristling and getting paralyzed, you relax and into that knowing that it's okay. You know, you're okay and it's okay. Yes. It takes some wisdom to get there. It's not, it's not always easy, right? Like, like we said before, it's the long game. It's just... Yes, but it's the inner voice. Cause once we connect to that and that's where we go and that's what we look for guidance, then I think we're directed in a really good place. Mm. It keeps you grounded, doesn't it? Yes. And that voice can be heard all the time. Mm. So the minute you find yourself looking out, if you look in, you will hear your own inner, I like to say your own inner voice. Um, yes. And be directed back to yourself. I love that. So the clients that you work with, Again, you know, I'm sure a lot of them have gone through things. What is something that, you know, you've seen someone go through a real transformation working with you um, where they've gone from that one point to the com maybe the complete opposite point, or maybe they're still on the journey of that point, but they've come so far. Do you have any good um, insights or examples into people that you've worked with like that? Well, I think most people have come from somewhere and the somewhere sometimes is not feeling good. Um, the transformation occurs when we stop feeling like we're a victim and start taking personal responsibility for the choices that either we made then because we didn't know better or the choices that we're making now. And once again, when we can look back from right here now and say, you know what, I wasn't a victim. This was the choice that I made because I really didn't know that there was another choice. That feels so much better. We're not dragging anything into our now. Or to say, there are things happening right now. They're not happening to me. But I am choosing to allow these things to happen because I'm not ready to make another choice. There is so much personal power in just rephrasing things and understanding that we are in control. From that point on, so many wonderful things begin to happen in our life because we feel like we're in control of allowing them to happen or not allowing them to happen. We can be the victor or the victim. And it's a choice. It's a choice. Yes. It There's is. no bad choice. If you're a victim and choosing it, it's okay. It's not a bad thing. You're making the choice. Because you don't have another choice right now. It's okay. But take responsibility. Mm, well, that responsibility is a big one for me. Um, because it took me a long time to realize that life wasn't happening to me. Right? That I had to have responsibility mindset of my actions, my habits, my behaviors. A responsibility of the people I was hanging around with. A responsibility of myself and my internal thought process as well, right? But ultimately that responsibility to acknowledge, do I want to stay this way? Do I want to move on or do I want to stay the same? And for me, 
It was a fear of staying the same that outweighed my fear of failure, rejection, and ridicule. And when I was able to actually do that, I was able to become that victor for the first time. And that responsibility mindset was huge. It was a shift. People ask me all the time, how could you have been suffering from major depressive disorder, anxiety, suicidal thoughts just two years ago, and here you are today? I took a responsibility mindset. And in order for you to succeed and go on to those next levels, anything's possible. That responsibility mindset was so pivotal for me because for so much of my life, I was a victim. And I thought that was my only option and choice. And I like what you say, too, that don't beat yourself down if you're having these feelings of being a victim. Just kind of, you know, understand that you can move forward. But honestly, some people just aren't quite ready yet. And it's nothing to force, right? Mm -hmm. We can't force somebody to be a victor. (laughs) No. No, and and there's nothing wrong with it if you're taking responsibility, but there's so much power in knowing that you're in control of every single thing that happens. Yeah. And people say, how could that be? Well, it's true because your response or your reaction to anything that happens really sets the tone for what is going to happen. Yes. You're that powerful for yourself, not for others. And it's amazing. Everyone wants to do it for others. And those are the people that are avoiding actually doing it for themselves. Like, yes. <laughs> no I one know. knows better than you for you. I but, know. <laughs> but you don't know anything in terms of what's better for another. It's absolutely true. We cannot um, do things for other people. I, I, I liken us, each of us, as, you know, a seed, a, a sprout, where we have all this potential within us. You know, we don't necessarily look at an apple seed and think, wow, that could be an apple tree, right? That can grow for hundreds of years and produce hundreds of thousands of apples and fruit and feed to all these people, right? But we all have that potential within us. But what it takes in order for that seed to sprout, and you have to cultivate it, you have to take care of it, you have to water it, right? If you're a little tiny seedling in a big field and you're wilted, is watering all the other seedlings going to do anything for you and ultimately for them in the long run? Probably not, right? We have to take care of ourselves first. But so few people do. You know what, Jamie? Especially women sometimes. We have a really hard time taking care of other people first and, or pardon me, taking care of ourselves first. We take care of everyone else first, right? And that would be fine, but it breeds resentment. And then we don't feel good. And the person that we're extending ourselves to doesn't feel good because it doesn't feel good to them to be received by someone who's resentful. So it's a lose-lose. You know, the most important relationship that we have is the one with ourselves. And we have a responsibility to care for ourselves the way we want to be cared for. Yes. I love that. That is so powerful. And it is empowering to know that we have all the power and potential within us and that all this, you know, untapped energy is there. And through it, we can have an immense amount of power and purpose and ultimately serve more people. Yes. That is a win. We can't serve more people if we don't serve ourselves first. Yes. And they say when you get on an airplane, put your oxygen mask on first than others. And it's so counterintuitive to us, like that we don't get that. And yet, you know, it's probably one of the most important things that they say. It's for a reason. We cannot take care of others until we take care of ourselves. And that's mentally, physically, you know, self-care is important. Self, self self-care, first of all, Here's what self-care is not, (laughs) because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about that, right? It's not eating a whole pizza, (laughs) right? Well, if you're sitting down and choosing to eat a whole pizza because that feels good, then that's good. You know, it's a choice that, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that was a bad analogy. But But it's 
definitely self-care is not selfish. It's not selfish. That's yeah. right. It's not selfish. It's it's selfless. And if we think of it that way, um, it hopefully changes somebody's opinion and mind out there, right? Somebody who's struggling, who's feeling like they have no energy. And I know what that feels like because I was once that person. You wake up tired. How could you sleep for eight hours and wake up exhausted? You're probably not giving to yourself first, right? And it shows up in different aspects of our life. Sometimes it shows up physically, right? We're not taking care of ourselves. We're not exercising. Uh, we're not eating healthy. It could show up at work. It could show up as, you know, we're taking care of everybody else, but our job is not being taken care of, our particular tasks or things, you know? But that's not something to feel bad about. When you have recognition of that, that's a wonderful thing because then from that moment you can say, what is it that I need to be doing for myself so that I can feel nourished and nurtured back into connection with who I really am? And that's a great question. Yes, I love that. Self-reflective, you know, let's all take some time today and just ask ourselves these kind of self-reflective things and do not hold grudges against ourselves. It's time to sit back, nurture, take care, love yourself, and do whatever in your capacity to, you know, have that level of acceptance. I think that's so important. That's really when we grow as individuals. Um, Jamie, I think this was such an informative discussion. I think a lot of people can come away with a lot of different tips and information. Um, if you have, what, what would be like one good, maybe self-care or self-love tip that you could uh, give to the listeners today? Sit with yourself for 10 minutes in the morning and ask yourself, what is one thing that you appreciate about you? Not what someone else appreciates about you, but what do you appreciate about you today? That's pretty and, empowering. And it's pretty simple and it's self-care in 10 minutes. And that sets the tone for the whole day. Yes. I love that. And we can go to bed like that too, right? What is yeah. one thing what is one thing I did today that I'm really proud of? I think that's important too. Acknowledging those small little wins is a good way to just keep our confidence high and, you know, again, not stay victims, but learn how to be those victors with small little steps that are tangible, bite-sized pieces. And not share those 10 minutes with anybody else in the morning or the night. You don't need to tell anyone what you're doing because it will feel better if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. But that's such good wisdom, such good advice. Jamie, where can everybody get a hold of you? I have a website. It's www.jamie-lernner.com. It's perfect. Well, thank you so much, Jamie, for being a valued guest on our show. This is season two, and we're ramped and rolling. We've interviewed a bunch of guests already. This is the 31st episode, so it is just a continual snowball of amazing guests, great conversations, and insights into personal development and confidence building. Thank you so much for everyone who tuned in and watched today. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, and leave a review, and let us know who has been your favorite guest so far. I love hearing from my amazing listeners from all across the globe, so let's hear from you in comments. But Jamie, thank you so much for being a guest today, and you're welcome back anytime. Thank you for inviting